This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. All right, so last time on the Fruit of Grisea, um, so Michiru ordered Sachi to get rid of the upcoming test, kind of as a joke, but then Yuji's like, no, we gotta t do this seriously, and then it resulted in Sachi planning to burn down the school and Yuji actually blowing up the school. Yeah, I don't know how we got permission to do that, but now we're apparently gonna deal with the aftermath of that. Hopefully we got Sachi to see a little bit how she should stop taking everyone's orders implicitly without thinking about the consequences whatsoever. Anyhow, we're home. Okay. Human warmth... okay. And let's start. <clears throat> Human warmth might, just might be the one and only drug God permits us. I mean, drugs are bad, so... Or so I thought the first time I slept with a woman. The welcoming softness of their skin, the just right heat of their bodies, it's enough to make your brain melt out of your ears. When you've got something like that lying in your arms, it's only natural that you'd want to hold on to it forever. But unfortunately, only monkeys get to spend their lives immersing themselves in physical pleasure, and I happen to be a higher primate with other things to worry about. Sure. Specifically, the stunt I just pulled on behalf of the girl I fell in love with. I destroyed Mahama Academy, knowing full well how much trouble it would cause. Just a little bit of trouble. I've got to accept the reality and own up to my actions. First and foremost, to the four girls who were so concerned for Sachi. Uh, they're on a helicopter ride of Mater, it's fine. Sachi! The instant we enter the dorm and announce our arrival, Michiru pounces like a twin-tailed tiger, wrapping both arms around Sachi. Aww. <laughs> She's giving you a regular hug, Sachi. Seriously. <laughs> I do I do not get that, how, like, people are so eager to, like, believe that characters are gay just because they, like, hug other people. Or are nice to other people. Like, what? Yeah, well, they saw the explosion from the helicopter! They probably thought you died! Nah, I'm just fine. Yeah, they got front row seats to the big explosion. <laughs> Dad gum. Yeah, we didn't have enough C4 to make it a skyward explosion, but it was close. Pretty pulse-pounding little tour, right? Just about right for the last night of summer vacation. <laughs> Maybe Yumiko just has a fear of helicopters. Sakaki's words are sardonic and accusatory, but the look on her face is surprisingly gentle. I don't get the impression she's actually angry. It's okay. The prin principal approved. In contrast, Amine marches right up and grabs me by the shoulder, resembling nothing so much as an ogre who woke up from the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> Donkey, why did you blow up the school? <laughs> uh, sure, what do you want me to explain? I don't know, pretty typical high school stuff. Ah, right. That. Well, what's to explain? We just got rid of that test as requested. Well, I mean, one thing led to another, and you know, get rid of a test, blow up the school, they're basically synonymous. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Oh, I can't even imagine the amount of fan art this game has. <laughs> That, and that's when Yumiko grabbed the, the parachute and went skydiving for the first time. 
It's okay. It was like Breath of the Wild. She had the paraglider. <laughs> Yumiko's like, I'm pretty sure you said to burn the school down, not blow it up. Well, you know, we gotta make backup plans, right? I'm doing well. Slept in a little too late this morning, so I had a lazy start, but I'm, I'm doing just fine. It's been actually a productive morning other than sleeping in. Sounds like a net positive. But in any case, that's the exact reason I made sure you were all safe in the sky. Because I just happened to have four tickets on a helicopter ride. <laughs> They're really trying to make Amine the only sane person. Well, as for that... Interrupting mid-sentence, Sachi takes a determined step forward. <laughs> Are you trying to throw me under the bus, Sachi? I mean, I was the one who purchased those explosives. And so she explains clearly and frankly, starting at the very beginning. The advice I gave her, the feelings I conveyed to her, the trauma of her past, and the struggle she's undergone ever since. She doesn't hold a feign back. She doesn't flinch or hesitate. Oh wow, plot dump. Oh, never mind. It's opposite of throwing us under the bus. I mean, Yuji should also be sorry, because he was the one who basically organized this to happen in the first place. There's a reason everyone here avoids talking about the past. We all vaguely understand that it can't be a pleasant topic for anyone in a place like this. What if one of the, the people here actually just had a normal past and was just like, Oh, I'm just here because it sounded cool. <laughs> that, would be, that would be a great twist. <laughs> Sachi, of course, is no exception. Talking about this can't be easy for her. But even so, she lays everything bare in front of her friends and then bows her head in sincere apology. Like, maybe, maybe Yumiko's like, the only reason I go here is because my dad made the school. I mean, she, ha she probably has some issues as well with her stabby, stabby tendencies, but... oh, Everyone's sad. Our classmates, still half in shock over the abrupt demolition of their school, now have Sachi's complicated and unhappy life story to contend with as well. Finally understanding how their friend became the obedient maid they've all joked about all this time, the four girls sink into awkward silence. So, who wants to go to Dairy Queen and get the Blizzard of the Month? <laughs> well, that's the way Sachi sees it. But the fact is, I'm the one who decided to blow up the school. I knew it was going to cause you trouble, but I did it anyway. And for what it's worth, I'm really sorry. Following Sachi's example, I lower my head in apology. That's right, Michiru. You're gonna have to start taking responsibility for your own life. Yeah! Alright! Dairy Queen for everybody, then! Do they have Dairy Queen in Japan? They do now! <laughs> We're gonna open the first. Sachi must have been genuinely prepared for anger or rejection. When she receives warm words instead, tears well up in the corner of her eyes. Now that she's finally realized just how important these people are to her, her their acceptance must feel incredibly good. I think I owe you an apology in particular, Sakaki. Yeah, I know it's not enough just to say this, but I really am sorry. <laughs> I know how much they ate at the Chinese buffet. <laughs> what? Crap! I knew we forgot to ask somebody! <laughs> we never talked to her father. We're just like, hey, principal, can you do this for us? And she's like, sure. <laughs> And we're like, hey boss, can I get some explosives and plane tickets? And she's like, ah, sure. And it's like, oh wait, we didn't ask the owner of the school. 
Your dad might be a, bit, a little bit of a tool. Even so. Oh. Oh, maybe she doesn't want to be here. Hmm. I'm aware that Sakaki and her father don't exactly get along, but... We're talking about a large, modern building with top-of-the-line facilities and equipment. The initial construction costs alone may have, would have been well into the billions of yen. Yeesh! Think of all the Disney Cokes you could buy for that price. They have Froyo in Japan. Eh, it's not Dairy Queen, but it'll have to do. Dismissing something like that as a birdcage suggests that she's still got a little bit of the East Beach Group CEO's daughter in her, whether she likes it or not. What's fun about making people grovel? Well, judging from how quickly things have returned to normal, I guess learning Sachi's past isn't going to make them awkwardly self-conscious around her. <laughs> yeah, Sachi, your backstory was pretty sad, but wait till you hear my backstory. It's way worse. <laughs> okay, let's say I did. Would you have agreed to go along with this plan? <laughs> hey, Amine, we want to destroy the school for fun. Uh, can we do that? No! More importantly, getting this done required some dicey maneuvering. If things had ended badly, your knowledge of the plan would have become a serious liability for you. <laughs> is that how this is gonna end? <laughs> We're on the lamb together. Nobody really cares, right? Like Amine says, there's only a few cops standing outside the gate and no media presence whatsoever. I've noticed a few, a few curious locals passing by to gawk at the rubble, but that's about it. Sorry to disappoint. Doesn't look like we'll be doing any time for this one. Well, it helps, it helps to have such a great principal. I did what I could, but things could have played out differently. It came down to your father. <laughs> Turns out he never opens his eyes, so he couldn't see it! <laughs> I, we're just glazing over the fact that we somehow got permission to blow up the school easily. I, I, I'd be a lot more suspicious about that. Well, it's also the middle of the night. Oh, hey, it's Putsupal! Chizuru, you already done out there? This game is very unbelievable right now. I see. Seems the dice really did fall pretty nicely this time. Almost freakishly, so... <laughs> oh, who didn't? <laughs> who didn't know? <laughs> That's all it took! <laughs> We really gotta do something about Makina. <laughs> yes! どういうことなんですか言葉通り昨日の爆破解体は正規に行われた工事だったの自然にこういう<笑> 
Accepting a flyer from Principal Tachibana's outstretched hand, a puzzled Michiru begins to read its contents out loud. <laughs> Wasn't it just built, like, literally last year? Oh, that was that was like almost ten years ago. Well, it's exactly what it looks like. I made two specific requests of Chizuru. First and most important, I needed her to provide me with the detailed blueprints of the school in order to ensure an efficient, reliable demolition and prevent any collateral damage to the dormitory that's become our home. And secondly, I asked her to provide advance warning and follow up with the Mishima Cape community. As Chizur is both the principal of our school and the well-connected daughter of the prefectural governor, oh, I forgot about that, she was uniquely suited to play that role. But the school was built last year! It's like, oh, we, I know we just spent billions of yen building this top-of-the-line industrial school last year, but, um, we made some mistakes and we want to make some res renovations. Uh, okay, I, I guess. It's a little early, but, oh, also, we're gonna blow up the whole school to start from scratch. Are you kidding me? No way! <laughs> And you're planning on doing this the day before school starts? This is ridiculous! Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if that's like actually a famous thing that happened in 1992 that I don't know about because it happened in Japan. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. What? Yeah, that we did. <laughs> Mitru is the only sane person here. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? I'm Spider-Man! <laughs> what? Again with this? Name, Kazumi Yuji. Occupation, student. Currently attending Mahama Academy. We've been introduced, haven't we? Just what I'd expect from a discreet young lady like yourself, Amine. You're a damn good woman. I don't, I don't agree with that. Michiru reaches down and sweeps a few lingering clumps of grass from Sachi's skirt. Yeah, I don't think Sachi showered in a few days because she was working entirely on the plans. Boom. Nope! That's not happening. No! Using her babbling as an excuse? You're shameless, woman. <laughs> Yay, is Yuji gonna say no? 
<laughs> Principal's like, I will pretend I didn't just see you attack your girlfriend. Yeah! <laughs> Principal! Best girl! Principal! Best girl! <laughs> no, she's being sane! <laughs> Oh, yeah, Principal is officially best girl. No, not even close. I love how they were just planning on doing this right in front of the principal, and she's like, Um, no. <laughs> you know, Principal, we could avoid this if, I, if my dorm room just had a built-in bathtub. Just saying. It already has a big kitchen. <laughs> we, maybe we could change the closet that I don't use into a bathroom. What do you say? <laughs> so in other words, this entire plan was completely stupid right from the beginning. We already knew that, but yeah. <laughs> and of course, Michiru was told that she didn't have to study because she wouldn't have to take the test. <笑>あの、the instant the question leaves Sakaki's lips, actually before it fully left, because Artie was a doofus and skipped, Sachi's expression grows visibly serious. This entire plan was carried out under the pretext of getting rid of that test. I guess it's only natural that the outcome would be a point of interest for everyone in the room. You set this up, Yuji. You son of a gun. This is important. Halfway through a tentative sentence, Sachi closes her eyes and falls silent to think over the question more carefully. We watch and wait in tense silence for the result of her deliberations. <laughs> Kill me, true dying. I get the impression Shizuru had been expecting this answer, but she gently asks for confirmation anyway. <laughs> this is a good plan. I like that plan. And Sachi's shamelessly cheerful response, delivered with a big smile on her face, takes even me by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Michiru. I promise. I don't know if we're going to do every route, but I promise we'll do your route eventually. You seem like an interesting character. Just a few hours ago, the girl had been willing to do anything and everything to get rid of that test, up to and including something as dramatic as destroying her own school. So, understandably enough, everyone was startled by her overwhelmingly bright and positive answer. But it was undeniable proof that Sachi was no longer trapped by the skewed system of values she'd clung to for so long. Maybe that cheerful smile was a little audacious after that, all that, but nobody was about to criticize her for it. Once Chizuru let us know that the standardized test would be, fi in fact, be conducted a few days later than originally scheduled, well, we brought the gathering to a temporary conclusion. And after watching Sachi head off for her well-deserved bath, I pull out one of my cell phones and make a call. Hello, Buffalo Wild Wings. I'd like to order 18 Parmesan garlic wings to Michiru's room. <laughs> She'll pay for it. <laughs> After seeing a single rain and a little electronic static, I hear the usual voice on the other end of the line. Hey, JB, I've got a question I need to ask you. In person. <laughs> Is it 
that a coincidence? I'm right outside your window. Let me in. <laughs> How convenient. Unfortunately, we've got some onlookers hanging around the usual place. Would you mind heading somewhere else? I'll send you the address. <laughs> As I said before, I'm right outside your window. I'm in your closet. Our concise little conversation concluded, I immediately prepare to head out. About ten minutes after I reach the place I specified, a comically conspicuous yellow sports car arrives on the scene. Naturally, it isn't long before a certain splendidly shaggy-headed blonde emerges. That didn't take long! Not that it ever does with you. Plus, she played a lot of Crazy Taxi, so she knows how to drive fast. Yeah, sure. Maybe you're just watching me constantly through a high-powered telescope? <laughs> Give me 24 of the Blazin' Wings, uh, order that to the dormitory, but don't tell them it's the Blazin. <laughs> I want to see their reactions. <laughs> you have enough time to... <laughs> Gosh, you have enough time to bitch about nagging bosses with your coworkers, don't you? <laughs> Sorry, just a joke. Well, your comedic timing was off, Yuji. It's almost like the person reading it didn't realize it was a joke. Yeah. Oh, I, I freaking love this music. From what Chizuru tells me, Kasumugasa... Alright, alright. <laughs> Artie, you know phonics. Kasumigasaki... Dropped a gag order on this. I don't want to ask how you were able to do that, but okay. I see. At first glance, th that strikes me as an almost disproportionate level of legal force. It must have taken some serious groundwork, money, and political authority to get such a wide-scale order in place. You took the Blazin' Challenge once. How spicy are those? Because I, I have only been to Buffalo Wild Wings twice in my life. I'm really not a fan of it. But last time I went, I think I got the Garlic Parmesan Wings, which are like one of the tamest wings, and I was kind of surprised that they had a cumulative spiciness. So I can't even... <laughs> if that's towards the bottom of the scale, I can't even imagine what the Blazin' would be like. Sorry, I think I must be missing something here. Mind if we work through this from the top? Our school is owned and administered by the Sakaki Academy Educational Corporation. One small arm of the corporate octopus Sakaki's father controls. But from what you found, the school wasn't actually built by the East Beach Construction, their architectural branch. Instead, Sakaki quietly brought in the second biggest player in the field, Nishinozono Co uh, Construction. Right so far? <laughs> Aw, that's nice of them. I mean, <laughs> that's sounding a little bit like a corporate monopoly, but you know, we'll just ignore that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that they're just being nice to each other. And you were planning to use that knowledge as a shield for my otherwise unthinkable bit of demolition work. Okay, never mind. This is sound this is sounding more insidious. Right. So this is where it stops making sense. It's one thing for East Beach or Nishizono to throw some money around to keep the press off the scent. But, if we're talking about a gag order from Kasumugasaki, then... JB interrupts in a cold, flat tone of voice. Her expression has changed to match. It's the face of a superior giving orders to a subordinate in the workplace. From the sound of things, I'm going to guess you know the exact reason that decision was made. Hmm. I see. Understood. <laughs> In other words, we didn't want to answer that plot hole. Well, you just gave me pretty much the entire answer. As much as I need to know, anyway. 
apparently satisfied that I'm not going to press the matter further, JB lets the intimidating scowl drop off of her face. Second request, can you drive us to Dairy Queen? Because I gotta get blizzards for the dorm. And with a casual flip of her voluminous blonde hair, she's right back to normal. Uh, wasn't expecting you to move on so easily yourself. Hmm. Judging by her attitude, JB's really not that interested in the conclusions I've drawn. She just wants to make it clear that I need to keep them to myself. Affirmative. <laughs> well, I just blew up a school, so <laughs> I'm trying to be a little less aggressive after that fact. <laughs> I don't see the problem. Even if I don't know the exact details, it seems Ichigaya and I, and I happen to have a common interest on this one. Come to think of it, it wouldn't surprise me if your cooperation with this plan was authorized by someone upstairs. With an almost amused smile, JB turns smoothly on her heel and heads out for her car. Right back at you. Make sure you're getting your beauty sleep, all right? Your skin's going to turn into a mess at this rate. Her tone taking a distinct turn for the sour, JB slips into her car and then vanishes obnoxiously into the night. Hmm. The details aren't clear to me, but apparently the country doesn't think too highly by, of what the East Beach has been getting up to lately. At a guess, someone probably decided they could use my plan to wreck Sakaki's pet project as something of a warning shot across his bow. <sighs> I'd gone into this fully prepared to be cold for messing around with a major player, but my luck seems to have been astoundingly good. It's almost unbelievable how good it has been. A pet dog tries to bite its owner, only to have them protect him from the potential consequences. I guess it's not a completely unheard of outcome, but given a valuable enough mutt... But even if some influential elements in Ichigaya and Kamaska Kasumugasaki were on board of this, it's hard to understand how such a thorough gag order got handed down so quickly. It almost seems plausible that someone was orchestrating all of this from behind the scenes. Maybe that genius criminal we've supposedly got locked up in the basement. Yeah, sure. Just because I'm drawing a blank doesn't mean I need to start drawing conclusions based off of some urban legend our female employees invented for lack of anything better to talk about at lunch. In any case, it seems the country itself is protecting me on this one. No reason to look a gift horse in the mouth. For one fame, this means I don't have to give her any new worries. Oh, she's wearing a cute outfit! Apparently Sachi was waiting for me to return. She trots right up, up the instant I enter the dorm. Yeah. I I'm sorry, it's just... <laughs> Dairy Queen was closed! <laughs> You're going to have to be more specific. Oh no, I do this at every school I go to. I mean, what? She really is a sharp one. My face hasn't spontaneously started displayed by thoughts in bold type, has it? Not to worry, JB was on board with this from the start. Yeah. What? In the few hours since we stood above the ruined school, our positions seem to have completely reversed. 
The clarity of her feelings and the force of her convictions are enough to make me tremble. Guess I did say something like that, didn't I? Hi. Come to think of it, this is probably the reason I was drawn to Sachi in the first place. Trapped in constant hesitation, unable to find any meaning in my existence, I wanted someone to do, who could tell me, It's alright. Someone who could look at me in the eyes and say, You can be here. Someone who could see past all my lies and half-truths and say, I believe in you with absolute conviction. Someone like Sachi. Sachi. Hi. Nandesho. Mind if I hug you? Before the words are fully out of my mouth, I've wrapped my arms around Sachi's waist and pulled her, her small body close. <laughs> he asked, but he didn't really care what the answer was. I mean, you guys are dating, so, like, yeah, that's fine. Sorry, couldn't restrain myself. CG, CG, CG. Yeah, plain fair isn't my style. But since you were, uh, but since when were you the sort to get flustered over something like this? Her face is bright red. Sachi hugs me back, tightly pressing her chest against me. True enough, her heartbeat seems to be significantly elevated. Nice to know she wasn't exaggerating for my benefit. Hmm? At this point, I finally notice something is a little unusual here. By the way, these clothes. Well, yeah, they're the best. You bet, kid. Her voice wavering uncertainly, Sachi looks up into my eyes. Just seeing her act like this is enough to hit me with a fierce kick of affection. Yeah. Incomprehensibly good. You're fabulous, kid. <laughs> oh my gosh. That expression of Sachi's always takes me off guard. She looks significantly more evil in this. <laughs> with this expression. Just your imagination. You look cute, Sachi. As I pet Sachi's head, the expression on her face suggests her displeasure isn't quite as sincere as she'd like me to believe. The girl's not exactly hard to understand. But then again, this childish simplicity is a big part of her natural charm. If we have a repeat of last time this happened, I'm gonna be unhappy. Yeah, I was planning to go in after you finished, but... No. Thanks, but I'll pass. Thank you! I don't want to have to mute my stream again. Because I get the feeling your servicing would go a little beyond washing my hair. Uh, I seem to remember you implying the exact same... You know no shame. The dust literally hasn't even settled on this incident, but one thing's already become clear to me. After all the time I spent floating indecisively alone, I've found something like a reason to live. And without a doubt, this girl is the one who gave it to me. I have Sachi now, and that's enough. I have someone who believes in me, who trusts in my return, who smiles wholeheartedly at my words. No matter what else I have to give up, I want to protect that. She's irreplaceable to me. For her sake, if nothing else, I think I can go on. Aw. That's nice, but why is, like, every visual novel protagonist, like, very depressed with their life until they meet a girl? <laughs> 